Hello, my name is Scott Gross, and I'm the host of That's Gross. And today I'm joined by Hiba Sikander. And uh, Hiba is a, uh, an international exchange student at Goffstown High School. And I had a chance to meet Hiba uh, about three or four weeks ago and had a really, really interesting conversation with her. And I invited her to come on my show and really talk about her experiences, not just uh, here in the United States as an exchange student, but really also about uh, her native country of Pakistan, and maybe talk about what are some of the common misconceptions uh, that people might have of Pakistan, or some of the similarities actually between both Pakistan and the United States. So welcome, Hiba. I am delighted to have you on my show. <laughs> Thank um, you. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah. Uh, and, and I didn't, I, I did mean what I said uh, when I mean, very, you're a very, very interesting person. And I just wanted the viewers uh, out there in, in, in Goffstown and the surrounding communities to get, get to experience what you're all about because you are a very compelling person. So, so you decided that at some point that you wanted to be an, an exchange student and come to the United States. Tell me a little bit about how that, what, what made you do this? Okay, so um, I'm actually from a city, actually, which is Karachi. Um, but especially my family, we're from like a small town and we are not like that much fin financially good enough. But I'm personally really into like socializing and I love meeting new people. Um, but I, could, I, I knew like I could never get a like, chance to um, really go abroad and study. And then in my school, we get applications from, our, from that program, which is a YES program. And the full form is Youth Exchange and the Scholarship Program. So um, I just applied on that program and we, I kept on giving tests and interviews. It actually took a whole one year for our, wow. for our selection. And um, like actually from like then after like when we got selected and we became finalists. So then we got to know that from our country, like 1,500 students, they applied for this program and only like 160 students they got selected. So it's very competitive. Yeah, it yeah. was actually. And there were like tons of tests and interviews. And when I got, like I became finalist. So um, I realized that actually I'm also like that much capable and I became like more passionate than. So you felt like pretty confident, I guess. Yeah. Right? yeah. Now, what did your parents think of this whole thing as you were going through that? I mean, were they, you know, I'm a parent. I have, I have yeah. two daughters myself and if I said to them, you know, you're going to go half the world away and spend, you know, upwards of a year. I'd be very nervous with your parents. What was it? What were their feelings? Okay, that's actually so funny because my mom, when I was giving all tests and interviews, so my mom was like, okay, go give interview. You will get experience and like that. But she was actually not expecting that I will get selected. And um, when I cleared my final test and I got in, um, I let her that, oh, I'm the finalist. So then my mom was like, are you really going? And I was like, yes, because yeah. I actually worked hard for it. And um, actually, obviously, she's a mom, and she was like actually uh, very worried that, oh, you will go alone. And I have never even been out of my city before. So, um, but later on, my especially my dad, he was like really, he was actually proud of me, and he was like, okay, you are God selected. Um, God has given you a chance, so you should definitely go. So then my mom was like, oh, okay, yeah, you should definitely go. And I'm so glad that I have these par parents. That are supportive of it. That, yeah. that are so supportive. Now, uh, just curious, I mean, what do your parents, what do they do for a living in, in Pakistan? So um, my mom, she's an art teacher. So she just like teach in a school. Right. And my dad, he's a salesman. So um, he just likes, um, um, like, he purchases the wholesale rate market stuff. And then he sells them So in not profit. a whole lot different than what a typical yeah. American family would have right. for their parents' jobs then. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's really interesting. So um, what we're going to be doing here also is uh, Hiba has been kind enough to give, to give us uh, photographs that, that have been taken both in Pakistan and also here in, in, the, in Goffstown and, and in the United States. And we're going to talk a little bit about some of these photographs. And, and I'd like to show the, the first photograph here. And... Um, Hib, if you be, uh, this is, I believe, this was an, an orientation that yeah. you that you went to. Right. And tell us a little bit about that orientation. So um, when we all became finalists, so we all were invited in an orientation that was in the capital of Pakistan, that is Islamabad. So we stayed in a hotel, and um, there we actually learned about American culture. And um, because my program, it's actually not only about being an exchange student and coming here and studying and then go back to your country but it's actually about like teaching people and learning from people. So um, we, got, we got like a, an overview of like, like other students' experiences and we got to learn about other, other like alumni. 
and they taught us like um and they taught us like um you you should do this and do that so you're comfortable when you do come over here yeah right, right. Yeah. definitely so I, I also want to I want to show some of the viewers uh, you know just they're curious as to you know where do you live what's your house look like so I want to I want to show them right now a, a photograph uh, of your home and if you can just tell us uh, a little bit about your house and then we're going to show I guess your you know your room your, your own bedroom and your living room etc so let's start off with with your house um, so you said you live in a city how many people live in this city 23 million people 23 million yes okay. and I'm placed in New Boston so which is like only 5,000 people right so that was the big, biggest wow. culture shock for me yeah I'm from the New York City area and that I think it has you know 8 to 10 million people I can't yeah. imagine 23 million yeah it's like wow. almost four times more than right. the population of New York City yeah so uh, the next photograph that we're going to show is of your I guess it's your family room or your living room yeah and um, can you tell, one of the things that was kind of, I was curious about was uh, in this photograph, there were no, I didn't really see like couches. Right. So is that something that is, 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 uh, is that typical for a Pakistani home to not have uh, a, a couch as we know here in the United States? Yeah, so um, we consider like couches and stuff, they're like, especially for drawing room, like guest room. Okay. Otherwise in like living room, it's like we, um, we like feel pretty comfy like sitting on the floor and we eat on the floor so that's why we have like living room without couches okay so I guess that saves some money too right yeah, yeah it does <laughs> I just spent a lot of money on on uh, on a couch myself so <laughs> this next photograph that we're gonna show is of your of your bedroom right and this actually looks uh, you know really nice and it looks like it's pretty big I mean a most I know in some countries um, the, the houses are very small, but this your bedroom looks looks fairly large. Yeah, right. So um, actually, when I first came here, I also like noticed that thing that here, like most of the houses, the bedrooms are like pretty small. Like otherwise, in my country, we don't have that small bedrooms. We have pretty large like rooms and bedrooms. They're like pretty open. Right. Now, um, this next photograph that we're going to show this, I believe, is this is your family. And yeah. uh, would you mind just telling us who you know who's in the who's in the photograph and um, you know, talk about, t tell us about your family. All right. So obviously on the left side, um, it's me and um, my mom and my sister, she's actually taller than me. And my host sister, she's also like taller than me. So like, I'm like the shortest person in my family, in both of my families. And um, he's my brother, he's um, in, in a university. So he's actually in grade 13 and we call it university. So I'll talk to you like later on about like school and stuff. Okay. So, um, and my sister, she is in sixth grade. She is going to be in seventh grade because our school system, it starts from April. So it's like also pretty different. Gotcha. So you're, you're here as a sophomore yeah. at Goffstown High School. Would, is that what you would be in Pakistan had you stayed there? So um, when I, uh, I actually gave exams of ninth when I first, uh, when I was coming here. And once I'll be back, so I'm gonna repeat my year because right. our educational system is so different. So um, it's pretty different. Like your your school starts from grade one to 10 and then 11 and 12th grade is called a college. And then 13 to so on, like it depends on the course. So it's called a university. Okay. So we also have like pretty different divisions. All right, well, we're gonna, we're gonna get to uh, education now. Um, this uh, next photograph that I want the viewers to see is uh, is of your your public school, and um, it looks pretty nice. Yeah. Uh, is, so, how many students go to your the school in Pakistan where you go to school? Um, sorry, I didn't get how that many. Question. How many? What number of students? Like at Goffstown, there's uh, one thousand two hundred yeah. students. How many are at your at your school? I think um, in my school there are like pretty. 3,000 or something. Oh, really? I'm not exactly it's, sure, but yeah. yeah. It's Because it's pretty big. Like, only this building that you're looking at, it's only the secondary building. And we also have, like, a different building, which is from 1 to 5. And we also have, like, different grounds and stuff. It's pretty huge. Like, so big. Now, here in the United States, there's a lot of uh, high school sports. And yeah. there's theater and a lot of activities. In Pakistan, do you have that? in terms of are there a lot of clubs and 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 sports that that students play after school is it very similar or is it different so yeah about clubs i never heard about the clubs before like whenever i hear, hear of like the word club i thought like 
those kind of club that where like teenagers go and have fun like where you dance. those kind I gotcha. of yeah where right, you dance right, right, right. so when I first when I came here and I was like okay these are also clubs and they are actually right. educational ones so no we don't have these kind of clubs at all and um, about sp sports and stuff there's like a major sports called cricket right so uh, we we are like cricket fans like we are the biggest fans and um, we have like badminton soccer that we call football right and um, um, like ping pong that we call table tennis right. so like we also like call it different names now are there here there's as you've you've been to a lot of the games here but there are sports teams that represent the school is it is it similar is there a football soccer team yeah. for your school and they right. compete with other schools so it's similar yeah. in that respect yeah okay it is now um, I wanted to show a photograph uh, and this photograph is, is I guess was taken outdoors and um, it's it's the students of your of your school and I, one thing that I noticed was that um, obviously the uh, the girls or the females were separate from the boys in your school is that the case where the girl students are separated segregated from the boy students yeah it is so actually and uh, like most of the people have been misconception that oh is it because like girls are not t allowed to talk to boys so it's like religious thing or stuff but like most of the things are actually influenced by the culture so like we are not like that much uh, it's not a part of our, our culture to talk like that much. We can talk to boys, but not like actually that much interaction, like as I can see here. And um, so we have like different sections for boys and girls. We have like for each class, we have section A, B, C, and D. Okay. So section A and B is for boys and C and D is for girls. So we even have separate floors um, and we have separate lunch times. But it's still like after school, you can meet and you, we are friends. Like I still have some friends who are boys and who are from my school. So it's not really a big deal. But there's no like uh, hand holding at school. There's no. nothing like that, right? <laughs> no. Okay. And I also noticed that uh, in this photograph that there, um, so this, this school uniforms, yeah. right? So you can't go to school dressed the way you're dressed right now. No. Now what, it, like, what do you think about, so now you've come to the United States and you have the ability to kind of wear what you'd like. Yeah. Do you like that? Do you prefer that? Or do you, you know, is it, talk to me a little bit about that. Okay, so for that thing, I'm kind of neutral, I can say, because I actually like that way that whatever you want to wear, you can wear here. But um, in other side, if we look at like school, so it also means like discipline and it teaches you, not even like about like science and stuff, but it also actually teaches you how to walk and how to, um, con do conversation with people and like your life's way of living so um, it, it makes it helps you to be disciplined like if you are in any school and you want to you can wear whatever you want so it could be like even in inappropriate and um, it actually also like uniforms they teaches you to be like to be equal like no anyone is like uh, better or like less yeah, well, than anyone. And, and just so you know that um, although I don't know if of, there aren't too many public schools, although there are some with, yeah. that do require a uniform. There are a lot of private schools in the United States that do require the students oh, yeah. to wear to wear uniforms. So, mm -hmm. so the other the other thing that I wanted to chat with you about is just what is the structure of the school day? I mean, do you, what time does school start in Pakistan, and what time does it end? Okay. So for school times, it's just like same. We go to school, it depends like 7.30 or 7 in the morning, and it actually starts at 8. And But um, our school um, like over, like time for getting over is like about 1.40. So it's like pretty quick as compared to here. And we also have like um, each period is for 45 minutes. And even like starting this, before starting this school, all of these students, we first come like gather in a like open ground and we have an assembly so uh, there whatever you want to do any announcement or stuff so you can go on the stage and you can do it and each class they get the um, chance to do the presentation so that's how it also like helps you to do public speaking and stuff so before uh, it's starting like every day we just like gather together and um, get together and we just like do presentation and stuff for 15 minutes and then we sing national anthem and then we go to our classes now, when we talked before, you mentioned to me, which I thought was very, rather interesting, is that you were required to take English starting at a very early age. So tell me about the fact how at your school, foreign language is, is a requirement, right? Yeah. So um, English is, I can say, everywhere. Wherever you will go in any field, you can find English. It's like compulsory. 
So we have been studying English from like kindergarten. It's like from the very beginning. So it's not like a huge deal for anyone if you're going to if you're you, you're gonna go and speak to any random person. He can understand it. But interesting thing is this that not every like everyone speaks English. No, and like not everyone have the fluency. And um, so that's like a kind of thing. Uh, even like I can see a huge difference between language classes here and in my country because uh, I'm taking Spanish class here. So in the Spanish class, we speak a lot. We focus on speaking more than like writing and stuff. It's like we do more activities and it helps us to speak. But in our country, we just focus on grammar and like making sentences okay. and like writing. So not like, and even like we discuss in Urdu, like in our language, we don't even discuss in English. So um, you cannot like pick any random person and like talk to them. It's, you need to take other specific like language classes to speak English actually. So you speak Urdu, which is your native native yeah. language, English, and you're learning Spanish. Any other languages that you speak? So um, like because our, I'm a Muslim, so um, our religious book is in Arabic. So I can I, I don't I cannot say that I can speak Arabic, but I can read Arabic because of the religion. Um, I also know Hindi, which is like the language of Indian people, because Urdu and Hindi it's like a lot similar. Like only some of the words are different that we even know because of Bollywood movies and stuff. Right. And um, I also know Sindhi, which is a regional language. So in our con like in our country, we have like each province, which is like a state for you guys. It um, they have like their own languages. So I live in a state of Sindh. So um, in e every school, like we also learn the state language. So I'm I have also like learned Sindhi. So I I also know Sindhi language. You ever find yourself like? speaking different languages in, a, in one sentence or in a conversation? Does it, does it ever get messed up in your head? It does, actually, because isn't it so weird? Like, in yeah. my Spanish class, I use my second language to learn third language. Right. And um, sometimes I don't even get what does it mean in English, so I just, like, go to, I just, like, go to dictionary and translate that in first in Urdu, then English, and then in Spanish. Right. So it's kind of confusing, but it's well, also Well, I like think fun. it's something you should be proud of. I mean, that's that, it's not easy to uh, speak a, one other language, much less four or five different languages. So, uh, like I said, just super interesting. I wanted to show a photograph, Hiba. Uh, I know that I personally had some miscommunication, misunderstanding uh, maybe of Pakistan. And I, I guess maybe for me, it was, I, th I didn't know that it was as cosmopolitan or. Um, uh, so, uh, this next picture I want to show everybody is of a mall in, uh, in Pakistan. And, and just tell me, is this is this rather typical um, of of what of what you have in terms of shopping experiences? So it's, I guess it's a lot like the U.S. Yeah. So um, like most of the people have actually misconception because they think that oh we are very rural. Like even people they ask me like, do you ride on camels? Like do you even have cars? Do you have television? Like I'm like, dude, we are in 21st century. Right. So um, <laughs> we also like have the same like malls and stuff. So that's why I specifically gave you that picture that, hey, our malls also look, look like, like they're huge and they're just like here. It's not even like um, a new thing for us. Yeah, it didn't, you know, to me, I was like, wow. I mean, I, I just, I just didn't, I didn't know. Yeah. You know? And so that's why when you sent those photographs to me, I'm like, wow, it seems like it's, it's actually very, very right. similar. So every mall, has a food court, right? Yes. And uh, I personally love food a lot. Mm -hmm. And I want to show this next photograph. And um, can you explain to me, um, you know, what am I? What are, what are the viewers looking at in terms of the the food that's on this plate? So um, in this plate, like I think most of the people know about naan. So it's like a bread, and we mostly use naan for eating with other dishes. Um, and if you see like some, th th those are like chickpeas, and they're and just so you know, we love spicy food. So most of the items are like so spicy here. And um, there is also um, a, like a dish that is called korma and it is like made up, up of like chicken and different spices. And we also have like uh, boiled rice, which is basmati rice. That right. is like only the specific rice that we use. And also like Pakistan is also famous for basmati rice and like exporting them. So it's pretty good at it. So is it similar to Indian food? It's a lot actually okay. similar to Very Indian similar food. similar to Indian food? Yeah. All right. Like uh, whenever I couldn't find any Pakistani restaurant here, I just like directly go to Indian because it's not right. like even a difference. Like there's like so many, slightly different, but not like that different. It's so similar. So um, I just, uh, I wanted to give everyone kind of an overview and talk with Hiba a little bit about 
um, her life her life in Pakistan and and uh, it just seems to me that it, it's it's similar in many respects to the United States, but it's 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 also dissimilar. What what would you say is the uh, is the greatest difference that that you've experienced say here mm -hmm. than you have at in home? So um, obviously, I can say like interaction with boys and girls was like a big change for me because um, the school where I'm from, I have studied with boys from grade one to five, but after that, I we got separated. And um, like I have been then studying alone, like with only girls. So it was like a like a big change when I first came here, and like there were boys and girls, and like they're talking. And but um, later on, I I think I I was like pretty I adapted really like pretty quickly, and um, it's pretty good here now. Uh, also, like our weather, it's like really hot. So um, actually, we uh, measure in Celsius, so we could not even like measure like we cannot even um, think of uh, less than negative one degree Celsius, which is like almost 20 degrees Fahrenheit, I guess. Right. So we could not even imagine of that thing. So snow is unusual. Oh yeah, that's, right. my, that's my first time ever that I experienced the snow. And I remember like one of my friends, she was freaking out on Facebook and she was saying, like when she was back in my uh, city, so she was like, oh my gosh, it's 60 degree Fahrenheit and it's so cold, it's freaking cold. And she was like updating yeah. statuses again and again. And I was like, dude, chill. Like, well, you, came, you should come here. <laughs> Hiba, you came at probably, we had one of the worst winters we've had oh, in, yeah. in like two, two decades here. So um, so anyway, what I want to do now is, uh, again, we, we did a lot of convers we had a lot of good conversations about uh, your life in Pakistan. And we're going to have another episode, which I'd like you to watch. We're going to be talking to Hib about her, specifically about her experiences here in the United States and Goffstown. You also had some, I know you went on a trip to, uh, to Disney and some others. So I'd like for you to join me for our next episode in which we will talk to Hib about, about the U.S. And we'll go into a little bit more detail about uh, some of the unique uh, differences between Pakistan and the United States. So Hibba, uh, thank you so much for talking on this segment. And, uh, and we're also going to talk a little bit in the future about, about the United States. Yeah. So thank you so much. Thank you.